Okay, in this video, we are going to look at a simple op amp circuit using an operational amplifier, or sometimes called a differential amp. Now, today all the computers are digital, but back in the early days they were analog, so they used differential amplifiers in the early computers. And that's where the op amp originated from. So, in this video, I'm going to show you a practical example of an op amp circuit, and I'm not going to go into any heavy math or proofs. Now, you can see my diagram. I have a building block stage of an op amp circuit. I have a TLC 272 op amp. It's made by Texas Instruments. There's actually two op amps in this package, in this 8 pin dip package. You could get a TLC 271, which has one op amp, or you could get packages that actually have four op amps, quad op amp, like this one here. It's XR084. So you can see I have a small signal input and a large signal output. And you notice the output is 180 degrees out of phase from the input because we're going to configure our op amp as an inverting amplifier. So it's going to be an inverting amplifier gain stage. So what I want to do, I want to take a small signal from a microphone. So here's my microphone. It's a Shure 561 dynamic microphone. And it has a very small level output. So I want to be able to amplify it to drive a speaker. So here's my speaker. This is my little audio sniffer speaker. So I want to be able to drive the speaker from the small signal from my microphone. So I need a little amplif amplification stage. So we're going to use this little op app here to amplify the signal of, of the microphone to drive the speaker. Okay, I have my Shure microphone connected up to my speaker. Now the speaker is active. It actually has an amplifier inside and a battery. And here's my power switch. So if I turn on my speaker and, and speak into the microphone, testing, one, two, three, four, testing, one, two, three, four. You can see there's no audio coming out of the speaker. It doesn't have enough output to drive the speaker. Now the Shure microphone is a dynamic microphone, it has a low output impedance, about 150 ohms. So inside this microphone there's a diaphragm that vibrates when you speak. And on this diaphragm there's a little coil. So as you speak the coil vibrates in a magnetic field produced by a permanent magnet inside the microphone. So it's outputting a very small signal but it's a very clean uh, low noise signal. So we have to amplify it up to drive the speaker. Okay, I have my microphone hooked up to my scope. So we could get a reference output reading. Testing one, two, three, four. I'll give it a whistle test. Now the scope setting is 20 millivolts per division. So we're getting about 50, 50 millivolts peak to peak output of the microphone. So we'll just ballpark it at 50 uh, millivolts because I could whistle louder or go closer, but it's around 50 millivolts. So that will be our reference output of our microphone. Okay, I've built my op amp circuit on my breadboard and I'm feeding my microphone into the input. You can see the two terminals there. And the output is fed into the speaker. Now I'm powering the circuit by 12 volts, so it's a single supply op amp circuit. Now normally an op amp runs on a dual supply, plus or minus voltage supplies. But in this case we're running it off a single supply, so to do that we have to bias the output to half VCC. So I have a voltage divider here. You can see it takes the 12 volts and it cuts it into half and it feeds the 6 volts into the non-inverting input of the op amp. And that'll, that'll bias the output to 6 volts. So as the input comes in, on the positive half cycles, it'll go from 6 volts towards 12 volts. And the negative half cycles, it'll go from 6 volts towards ground. So because of that, we're going to have voltages on the output and the input. So we have to have blocking capacitors. So this blocking capacitor keeps the voltage from getting to our speaker. And this capacitor keeps the voltage from getting into our microphone. Now these two resistors here sets the gain. So we have a feedback resistor and an RN resistor, an input resistor. And I have the gain set to 80. So with those two resistors we can set the gain and then we'll drive the speaker properly. Now if I turn on my speaker and talk into the mic. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. You can tell it's amplified. So I have a good signal into my speaker. Testing, one, two, three, four. So what we'll do, we'll hook up the scope and we'll have a look at the signal as it's being amplified. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the output of my amplifier and my scope is set up for one volt per division. So we'll give it a little test. Testing, one, two, three, four, four. So with a gain of 80, we should get about four volts peak to peak when I do a whistle test. turns out about right. I'm getting about 4 volts peak to peak. It's pretty clean. You can see there's no noise. 
Test one, two, three, four. It's pretty clean. So that's the output of my little op amp amplifier. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the op amp circuit that I built on my breadboard. Now this is a simple inverting amplifier using a single supply. Now if you're going to build this circuit, all you need to do is change two resistors. That's the feedback resistor and the input resistor because the ratio of these two resistors will give you your desired gain. So in this case, the 220K divided by 2.7K equals 81, so that would be a gain of 81. It's actually minus 81 because it's an inverting amplifier. So you could pick out your ratio of resistors for your desired gain. Now normally when we power up an op amp, we power it up with a dual supply, a plus or minus power supply, so the output will swing above and below ground. But in this case we have a single supply, so we want the output to swing above and below 6 volts, half the power supply, so we get a symmetrical output. So now to do that, we bias pin 3, that's a, that's a non-inverting input, with half VCC, or 6 volts, and we get that from this voltage divider. So we'll take 12 volts, and we'll divide it down to 6 volts, and we'll feed that in, into pin 3, so it'll be a constant 6 volts into pin 3. Now there's a couple more ways we could do that. We could buffer, we could buffer the voltage divider with, with uh, the second op amp that's actually in the chip, so we'll have a buffered output, so it won't load down the voltage divider. Or we could use a chip. It's called a TLE2426. It's called a rail splitter. And it's actually a TO92 package. looks like a transistor. And it's actually meant to do this for a rail splitting for op amps. Okay, so now we have a constant 6 volts, half VCC, applied to pin 3, the non-inverting input. So we'll have 6 volts at the output, pin 1. Then it'll be fed back to pin 2, so we'll have 6 volts in pin 2. And if there's no input signal, there'll be no current flowing through the resistor, so we'll have 6 volts DC on this side of the resistor. So this capacitor will block the 6 volts from getting into the input, and this capacitor will block the 6 volts from getting into the output. Now all op amps have high impedance inputs, so there's no current flowing in or out of the inverting or not inverting inputs. And all op amps try to keep the inverting and not inverting inputs at the same voltage. Now since pin 3 is a constant 6 volts, this op amp is going to try to keep pin 2 always at 6 volts, no matter what the input is doing. And it does that by the output feedback, negative feedback from the output to pin 2. So no matter what the input signal is doing, it's going to react, it's going to sense the input signal, and it's going to, give, it's going to react by sending a voltage back to pin 2. So if the voltage is too high, it's going to try to drag it down. If the voltage is too low, it's going to try to boost it up. So we have a reaction voltage that's, that's following the input. Now this reaction voltage that's going up and down is actually the signal that we want to use. That's our output signal that's going to be amplified and we're going to use that. So it's actually the reaction voltage because of the input and it's trying to keep pin 2 as the same as pin 3 that we're going to get our output voltage. So that's basically how, how all op amps work. So we have a, a, our amplified voltage because, the, because of this resistor. So the higher this resistor is, the more this has to change the correct uh, the keep pin 2 at 6 volts. So the higher this resistor is, the more gain we'll, we'll get out of this op amp circuit. Okay, let's analyze this little op amp circuit. So here we can see a circuit with a 2k ohm feedback resistor and a 1k ohm input resistor. So the gain of the circuit will be 2k divided by 1k equals 2, so we'll have a gain of 2. So if we input a, a, a signal 2 volts peak to peak, our output signal will be 4 volts peak to peak inverted. Now this point here, we call it a virtual ground because the op amp will always try to keep that at 6 volts, and 6 volts is our reference that our output will swing above and below 6 volts, so that's our virtual ground. And no current can flow in or out of the inverting and non-inverting inputs. So any current flowing through this resistor will be the same current flowing through this resistor. So with all that in mind, we could, we could analyze this circuit, so we could actually turn this like that, so what we see here is basically two resistors in series, and we have this point here that's always going to be uh, 6 volts. So we can analyze it with Ohm's law. So if you look at the positive going signal going in, so we have a 1 volt positive going signal going into the circuit. So this point here now will become 7 volts because we, uh, we went up 1 volt. So 7 volts here and we'll have 6 volts here, that's a virtual ground. So we'll have 1 volt across this uh, resistor and the polarity will be plus and minus and the current will be flowing this way because we've got a higher voltage to this side. So wherever the current enters the resistor it will be positive, so we'll have a plus and minus, and we'll have one volt across this, this uh, resistor. 
Now we'll have, we'll have the same current flowing through this resistor because it's a series circuit. So we'll have one milliamp flowing through the resistor at 2K that will give us 2 volts. And the polarity will be plus and minus. So convention, we'll put arrow conventions. So the arrows are always pointing to the plus side. So the arrows point to the plus side. This is arrow, arrow uh, convention that we use in nodal analysis. So that's for the positive going uh, input. Now on the negative going input, so we got one volt going down. It's our, our, our negative uh, input. So now this point here will be five volts. So we have six volts here and five volts here. So we'll have one volt drop. The current will be flowing in this direction. So we'll have the polarity plus and minus across the resistor and we'll have one milliamp flowing through this resistor. The one milliamp flowing through this resistor, we'll have to have one milliamp flowing through this resistor at 2K. So we'll get two volts dropped across this resistor with this polarity. So that we put our arrow conventions in this direction. So if we start with the top, we start here with 7 volts, and we're going against the arrow. It's 1 volt, so we, we subtract it, so it's 6 volts. And from 6 volts, 2 volts against the arrow, so we, that drops down to 4 volts. So when we have a 1 volt peak on our positive going, we'll have 4 volts on the output. If we do the same thing for the negative going pulse at 1 volt. So if we start here, 5 volts, and the arrow is going with us, so we add. So that's 1 volt, so it would be 6 volts. And the arrow is going in the, in the same direction. So we have 6 volts plus 2 volts, so we'll have 8 volts. So on the positive going swing, we got 4 volts. Negative going swing, we got 8 volts. So here's our 8 volts and our 4 volts, and that's a 4 volt peak to peak output. So we have 2 volts peak to peak going in, and 4 volts peak to peak coming out. And that's our gain of 2, which we calculated with, with the ratio of the two resistors. Okay, that was a lot to take in, so hopefully you could digest some of that information. And a few tips. Keep your voltage gain less than 100 for uh, each op amp, because as your gain goes up, your bandwidth will go down. So if you want more gain higher than 100, cascade two op amps, uh, you'll have better stability. Now you can put a small capacitor across the feedback resistor, and that will cut down some of the high frequency noise and give, give you better stability. Also, your input resistor is going to be your input impedance of your circuit. So don't have it too low because you could load down whatever is driving your uh, amplifier. Also, your uh, feedback resistor, uh, keep it less than one mega ohm because if you go too high, the currents are going to get very small. You're going to create uh, more noise. Now, I haven't touched on a lot of other subjects like frequency, compensation, offset null, common mode rejection, slew rate, uh, gain bandwidth product. So there's a lot of information online. There's a lot of good books out there. Okay, here's a book written by Walter Jung. It's called the IC Op Amp Cookbook. And he's written a few books, but this is probably his best one. And I've had it for a while. You can see it's well worn. So if you could get a hold of this book, it's a good place to start. And it's very well written. So I hope this video has given you a primer on how op amps operate.